It is mock draft season. We are wrapping up free agency here, at least the early wave of it. Brian Callahan, Rand Carthon recently spoke at the league meetings in Orlando saying their focus is moving to the draft now. So ours is too. Today we're going to do a crazy multiverse. I'm calling it the Titans multiverse mock drafts here where we're going to look at many different scenarios for that seventh overall pick. A lot of different first round scenarios. What if Joe Alt isn't there? What if Joe Alt and Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze are there? What if none of them are there? We're going to go through everything, including the trade back scenario. This is the Music City Audible. Let's get to it. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast presented by Broadway Sports Media in partnership with 440 Sports. I'm Justin Graver and with me as always is Justin Mello. And today, as I said there, we're looking at the Titans mock draft multiverse, all the different ways the first round could shake out for the Titans, including the trade back scenario. We're going to get into that today. A reminder, this episode is brought to you by Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Sign up and join the in crowd. In crowd members get access to allocated wines and spirits, exclusive events, early access to barrel releases, and it's the only way you can attend the 440 draft party. Check out the link in this episode description to join the in crowd with Sinkers Beverages. Justin, how's it going today? Doing well, man. This is this is my time of year, right? This is where I eat. Hell We're yeah. uh, shifting our attention towards the 2024 NFL draft. You heard some very interesting comments that that Brian Callahan and Rand Carthon made from the league ownership, uh, the, the annual league owner meetings in Orlando, as you said, uh, you know, essentially admitted their, their attention shifting towards the draft. Uh, they don't know what they're doing at number seven overall yet. Of course, a couple things uh, piqued my interest. There you go. So anyway, let's get into these mock draft scenarios now, especially we're looking at the first round here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to obviously – People are writing it in pen that Joe Alt will be the Titans starter at left tackle this season. They're going to take him with the seventh overall pick. Most mock drafts that you will find right now, sure, there are a handful of exceptions. Bucky Brooks released one on Tuesday that has the Titans taking Olu Fashanu at seven. I think Warren Sharp also had one where the Titans take Olu Fashanu because Joe Alt went before pick seven. But for the most part, the majority of the mocks you're going to see out there will have the Titans taking Joe Alt with the seventh pick. So we want to present some different scenarios. We'll obviously get to the Joe Alt scenario. I think we'll do that first. That one's pretty obvious and straightforward, so we're not going to spend as much time on it. But then what if Joe Alt goes sooner? What if a tackle needy team trades up with the Giants or the Chargers and takes him ahead of the Titans? What if the Chargers or the Giants decide that they want Joe Alt to come anchor the right side of their offensive line? That He could t- you know, make that position switch if they feel he's capable and... They take Joe Alt ahead of the Titans. Let's see what else the Titans might be looking to do in the first round here. So the mock draft multiverse, let's get into it. The first scenario we're going to talk about is the four quarterbacks that everyone's expecting to go in the first round. They all go in the top six, likely in the top four. In this scenario here, we've got Caleb Williams, some combination of Drake May and Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy go in the top four picks. The Chargers take Marvin Harrison Jr. The Giants take Malik Neighbors. Joe Alt's on the board for the Titans. Romo Dunze's on the board for the Titans. Olaf Ashanu's on the board for the Titans. Brock Bowers, Jared Verse, Dallas Turner. There's plenty of names here, plenty of options. If you're the Titans and Joe Alt is on the board, is he the automatic pick for you, Justin? For me, he is in this scenario. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's a whole lot to debate. You're, you're talking about neighbors and Harrison Jr. not being on the board. I think those are the two names you'd probably get some pushback from Titans fans if one of them were available. And, and look, there's no chance Harrison's going to be available. I mean, neighbors, but we think there's a decent chance neighbors might be available. So you might get some pushback there from Titans fans. But uh, in, in this scenario, both those guys are gone. It's it's essentially Alt versus Fashanu. You might be able to include an edge rusher there. I think Dallas Turner is going to be the first one off the board. So maybe you consider him based on the huge hole they now have there and what's a premium position. I, I think one we're maybe not paying enough attention to because we probably got a little locked in to the tackle versus wide receiver discussion. Well, now they don't have a starting edge defender. It's, it's almost as important of a position as tackle in all honesty. I think it's probably number three on the list after QB one tackle two. So uh, for me, this is a no brainer. Uh, Joe Alt's the top ranked tackle. You've got your first dibs. No tackles been drafted in this scenario. You take Joe Alt, you start him at left tackle. You build that tandem with him and Peter Skaronsky on the left side. Coach Bill Callahan turns them both into annual pro bowlers and uh, all pro type line. Yeah. And if we talk about how like expected or predictable this particular scenario is, let's just look at what the sports books think, because the sports books have, you know, 
who will be the first overall selection, who will be the second overall selection. They don't go all the way down to seven. I think they most of them are stopping at five right now. So you can't actually bet right now, at least, on Joe Alt to be drafted by the Titans. But if we read between the lines here, the Titans are minus 320 on FanDuel to draft an offensive lineman. The next highest odds position group is defensive lineman slash, slash edge at plus 320. So that is a huge difference. That's you you bet $100, you win $30 in the offensive line scenario. You bet $100 on defensive lineman edge, you win $300. So obviously that's a huge difference here. This is a heavy, heavy favorite for offensive linemen to be the pick. And then you look at NFL draft odds for first offensive lineman taken. Joe Alt is minus 195. So again, heavy, heavy favorite. And Talies Fuaga is next at plus 340. After him is J.C. Th- Latham at plus 750. After him, Olu Fashanu, plus 850. So according to the sports books right now, again, these odds are, are FanDuel odds. Olu Fashanu not even going to be the second or third tackle drafted according to these odds. So if you look at, you piece these pieces together, Titans first team to draft offensive line, Titans heavy favorites to draft offensive line, Joe Alt heavy favorite to be the first offensive lineman selected. Put all those pieces together, and it, basically everyone's predicting, the sports books are predicting, that the Titans will draft Joe Alt. But what if Joe Alt isn't there? Let's enter the multiverse, Justin, and look at the other scenarios. So let's look at one where, you know, it's lying season, it's smokescreen season. We have all this smoke about J.J. McCarthy being a top four pick. We also have all this smoke about teams cooling on Drake May. Personally, I think this is just a, a result of talking about the same players for three plus months. And you start to like people want to have contrarian takes. So they throw out other names. It's like, well, we aren't paying enough attention to this guy. And that's how J.J. McCarthy just burst onto the scene. You got Jim Harbaugh out here saying he's the best quarterback he's ever coached. Best quarterback Michigan's ever had. They had Tom Brady. Like, give me a break with some of this stuff. You know, it's like a smokescreen. But on the other hand, what if only three quarterbacks go in the top six? What if one of those four quarterbacks, whether it's Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, one of them falls out of the top six? You're looking at the first well, three picks. Can yeah. I cut in real quick? Totally. Someone pointed out, and this is worth noting, that this time last year, Will Levis was the hands-on favorite by all the betting sports books to be the number two pick in the draft. Right. Number two. Titans took him 33. Yeah. And I mean, that, like, that would be bad for the Titans right now because obviously you want Joe Alt to be the pick. I think he's the best option for the Titans in the first round now, seeing what they've done in free agency, adding Calvin Ridley with DeAndre Hopkins. You don't need that difference maker wide receiver at number seven overall. You can look to take one later on in the draft if you still feel you need one this year. So makes Joe Alt to me the number one pick option for the Titans. But if three quarterbacks go instead of four, there's a chance he is gone before the Titans get a chance to pick. So let's look at that scenario. You got three of the four quarterbacks going top three. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. goes four to the Cardinals, who stick and pick now as opposed to trading back for someone else to come up and get a quarterback. Then you got the Chargers taking Joe Alt, the Giants taking Malik Neighbors. To me, this is the nightmare scenario. You don't have a chance to get Joe Alt or Malik Neighbors or obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think anyone really expects Marvin Harrison Jr. to fall to seven. But in this scenario, he's gone first. Then Joe Alt's gone. Then Malik Neighbors is gone. Now you're looking at a board where your top player might be Roma Dunze. It might be Olu Fashanu. I just mentioned that the, the sports books think that Talies Fuaga is going to be the second offensive lineman drafted. And J.C. Latham is going to be the third. We've heard reports now Teron Davenport has come out and said that the Titans are very high on J.C. Latham. If the Titans took him, would he be a right tackle? Would they slide him over to left tackle? How? What would the plan be there? I mean, I guess it depends if they sign someone else in free agency here to play left tackle. Then you maybe J.C. Latham stays at right tackle. But the Titans need a left tackle more than they need a right tackle, in my opinion. You can patch together the right side. The left side is, you know, you already got Peter Skaronsky over there. Like, just build a wall on that left side of the line. So what do you do in this scenario, Justin? Do you take Roma Dunze here at 7? Do you take one of these second tier offensive linemen who if we, if we think Joe Alt is in a class of his own, which is kind of where the consensus is trending now. It used to be Joe Alt and Olu Fashanu were the top tier by themselves. But as I mentioned, Fashanu's kind of falling in people's eyes, it feels like. Alt's in a tier by himself. Like, do you go to the next tier of tackles? Do you take the third best wide receiver in Roma Dunze? Or do you go crazy and take Brock Bowers or Dallas Turner with this pick? Well, I'll tell you what I would do. I, I would try like heck to trade back 
And it's crazy to say, but as you're talking through this scenario, I'm thinking, man, it really feels like Joe Walter bust Yeah, at this situation because it's like you talked about those three guys being off the board. Joe Alt, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Malik Neighbors. Let's talk about those three quick and why we've grouped them. Because A, we probably all agree they're the three best non-quarterbacks in the draft. That's why we've grouped them, right, at number seven. But it's like, I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be there, right? Yeah. And then it's like, do they even consider taking Malik Neighbors after they signed Calvin Ridley? So it's like, is it really just Joe Alt or nothing? Yeah. You can kind of talk yourself into that a little bit, right? Based on the receiver situation on the team and in the draft. So if all three of those guys are gone, and again, I, I feel like it's just Alt that matters in this situation. Uh, I'm trying like heck to trade back because all of a sudden I can talk myself into Olufashanu. I can talk myself into JC Latham. I don't think I could talk myself into Brock Bowers, but I get it why you'd include him there. You could probably talk yourself into Roma Dunze, even though the receiver situation is what it is, but I'm not done. I could talk myself into Talis Fuaga. Uh, I could probably, and did I say Olu? Fush- There's three tackles, right? Fashanu, Latham, uh, and Fuaga. I could talk myself into all three of them, right? Then you add the tight end, you add the other receiver. That's five players already. I could probably talk myself, honestly, into Dallas Turner as well. Because if I'm not getting the top tackle, I feel like I got a huge need at pass rusher now. I can talk myself into the best pass rusher in the draft, right? Or you could, Brock Bowers, for some, is the best overall player or best overall non quarterback or, you know, outside of Harrison. So, uh, all of a sudden, you can talk yourself into like six or seven different players. Yeah. So I think what I'm trying to do is trade down to like 10 or 11 or 12 even. I'm still guaranteeing myself one of those guys. And I, I don't see a whole lot of separation between them either. Yeah, but let's say you can't. Let's say you're trying to trade back. Nobody wants to come up to seven because nobody thinks the Falcons are taking a quarterback at eight. No one thinks the Bears are taking a quarterback at right. nine. No one even really thinks the Jets. I mean, the Jets could surprise everyone. They seem to be very much in a win now mode based on their free agency move. So if they took a yeah. quarterback at 10, that would be absolutely wild. So they no won't. one, no one thinks the uh, Jets they take won't. a quarterback at 10. If you only got three going in the top 10, Minnesota now picking at 11 after their recent trade, the Minnesota Vikings land the fourth quarterback there without having to trade up. I don't see anyone coming up. You know, maybe somebody comes up for, what, the second best offensive lineman? Maybe there's talk about the Saints now with Ryan Ramsick probably not going to play this season, that they could trade up for an offensive lineman. But if Joe Alt is already gone, are the Saints coming up for one of these other guys when you just well, said you'd be happy with any of the next three? I'd be, but that's not how NFL teams operate, right? Typically, they're going to fall in love with one guy over another, right? Just because they bring him to the facility and he's got a great visit and they like his leadership and character and he interacts with his teammates. Like, not everyone is a fit for everyone, right? So it's important that we remember that's not just trading up for quarterback. We've seen the Lions come up 20 picks a couple years ago for Jamison Williams. We saw the Saints come up 20 picks for Marcus Davenport, right? So it's like anything is possible. But I will say this. Uh, I'll tell you what I would do, and then I'll tell you what I think the Titans would do, because it's not the same, and I'm not just trying to be a hot take artist here, but I would take Olu Fashandu, I think. Mm. And that if I can't trade back, I would just stick and pick Olu at seven. I, I, is it prospect fatigue? I'm asking the same question, because I've been really high on him throughout the entire process. And you talked about Drake May. It's the same thing, where all of a sudden, he's going 14 at mock drafts. He's not going three, four, five anymore. He... Um, Perhaps people know something I don't. Is it? A, is there a character thing? Is there, I, I don't know. But uh, I'm really high on the guy on tape. A lot of people say his tape wasn't as dominant this year. I'm not super concerned with what I saw. I think he's a, a, a plug-and-play franchise left tackle still. Uh, the athleticism is out of this world. He, he's got better athleticism than Joe Alt does. So I think if I, I think I would trade back in the situation. If I can't, I would probably just take Fashanu. But I think the Titans would take Dallas Turner. Wow. In this situation, I think they'd fill that hole at edge. I really do. I mean, it's a gaping hole right now opposite Harold Landry. And Landry's not going to be around forever. Not that I'm trying to replace him, but you talked about that deal expiring after 2025 or 2026. It is. And then there's going to be some cap casualty questions there as that cap hit goes up every single year. If they, if they do want to get out of that deal, they'll have an option to. So yeah. Uh, I think there's a huge hole at that spot right now opposite him. And uh, I think if Alt is gone, Neighbors is gone, they can't trade back. Uh, it wouldn't stun me if they took Dallas Turner. It really, I'm at that point. Yeah, and look, like this is a position that I personally think the Titans could kick the can down the road. You know, like solidify that offensive line, get your playmakers, get your 
They don't really I need agree. another cornerback now, but you'll need a linebacker eventually at some point in the draft, whether that's second round, fourth round, whatever. But you look at the sports books, and like I said earlier, the second highest odds for position of Tennessee Titans first drafted player is defensive lineman slash edge. Third is tight end, plus 1,400. Right. Fourth is is cornerback plus 2,200. Notice I haven't said wide receiver yet. Although wide receiver is listed behind cornerback, it's actually the same odds at plus 2,200. Quarterback is next, above linebacker, where the Titans have the biggest remaining hole on their roster. Just goes to show what the difference between like draft value and needs, how they, how they align and don't align. Titans are not drafting a linebacker with their first pick unless they trade back 15 times into the third round or something. So they're not, that's not going to happen. And that's why that's so low on the list. But the fact that wide receiver isn't the second highest odds position here is kind of crazy and definitely points to the idea that they might take Dallas Turner. This is a position at edge. I mean, where you cannot just go sign the guy in free agency that's going to make a huge difference. That's why we were so high on the Titans taking a gamble on Chase Young because that kind of talent, whatever injury concerns and motivation concerns exist, that kind of talent doesn't fall in your lap in free agency. Look at what the Chargers did to retain Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack when everyone was like, oh, one of these elite pass rushers might be hitting the market. Is Joey Bosa going to team up with his brother in San Francisco? No. LA was like, no, we're not letting these guys go because it's very difficult to find this level of pass rusher. Now, Dallas Turner is not viewed right now as on the same level. You know, he's not going to be a first or second overall pick the way the Bosa brothers were, the way Chase Young was, Miles Garrett, like the elite pass rushers in the NFL were top picks. Dallas Turner is falling to eight because he's not quite that, but he has the tools and he has a lot of upside that if you are confident in your ability to develop him at that position, if you think you can bring him along slowly with Harold Landry and Arden Key already in the fold, I do think that this is a bigger chance than Titans fans want to admit. And I know there's a small subsection out there that have tweeted at me that the Titans are going to go edge at seven. I think that if Joe Alt's off the board and you can't trade back, it's definitely possible. If it were up to me, I would be taking Roma Dunze there and looking to ta- target the tackle in the second round. In your scenario where the Titans take, Fair. take Dallas Turner here, they could still be looking to take a tackle in the second round. You come out of the first two rounds hitting your top need and getting an impact player. That's still a win. I do think Titans fans would be upset (laughs) heading into round two before that tackle pick is made, thinking, what are we doing? Why would we draft an edge? But there's a very good argument to be made for why they should. I agree, especially if Alt is off the board. Like this is this is not again, this is not our likeliest scenario. Right. This isn't even our preferred scenario. I think you and I would both agree. But if Alt is off the board, you're having a tough time trading down. Uh look, just look at it this way. Most consensus big boards, just look around, are probably gonna have Dallas Turner ahead of every other player that we just talked about. He is like the seventh, eighth, or ninth best player in this class, right? That's the consensus around the league. So, and they've got a hole there. So uh, I agree. It's a position I would personally kick the can down the road, or I would look at 38. Uh, I think that's another underrated spot where they could uh, attack that position. In fact, not to give away my secrets, but heading into our mock draft a little later that you and I are going to do, I've personally got a plan that I, that I, I'm going to try to implement if the, if the player's available. But, uh, but yeah, for me, it's, it's a scenario we can't ignore because they've, A, they've right. got a huge hole there, and B, there's a semi-realistic scenario that he's like the best player on the board or the second or third best player on the board when they come on the clock. So it's, it's, it's possible uh, look at the RAS score. Like they might have seen that and said, "Jesus Christ!" Like the athleticism is just through the roof with this guy, right? Like the, the combine was a joke. It's just silly how, how he performed yeah. out there. So he's a top. And and you know what? If you don't take him, I think the Falcons or the Bears at eight or nine, they're sprinting they're taking that him. pick to the podium. They are taking him. They've got huge holes at that position too. Yeah. And then it brings up the question here as we dive into the multiverse. Well, before we get to that, actually, I want to mention something Rand Carthon said at the owners' meetings this week. When he was asked about, you know, the pick, it feels like everyone's mocking a tackle to the Titans. Is that the plan? He basically said, everything is still on the table. This tackle class is really deep. So there are going to be valuable guys throughout the draft. He said, it's so funny. Everybody has all these speculations about what we could and could not do. Even my 16-year-old daughter texted me the other day, hey, are we taking this tackle that everybody has us taking? Which obviously would be Joe Alt. (laughs) She is now looking at the mocks and asking what will happen. So it's going to be interesting. We'll see where we are at. 
but everything is on the table. Everything is on the table. So I agreed. It feels like a foregone conclusion that it'll be Joe Alt. If he's not there at pick seven, be ready to have your mind blown, Titans fans, because I don't think you're going to be... Everyone's going to be like, why didn't they pick Roma Dunze? But we'll we'll see what happens here. So anyway, let's dive into the multiverse here and look at it. This, the board falls the same way. Only three quarterbacks go, but Joe Alt, Malik Neighbors are gone by the time the Titans are picking. And in this scenario, there is a team that wants to come up. And that could be the Saints wanting to come up to get their tackle because Joe Alt's already off the board. They don't want to miss out on their guy. So they're going to come up to seven and take a tackle. Could be some team coming up to jump the Falcons for Dallas Turner themselves could be the Broncos trading up to get their quarterback. If there's three on the board and they need to get ahead of Minnesota because they know Minnesota at 11 is going to take a quarterback or Minnesota could be working still to move up at some point. Let's say the Broncos at pick 12 want to come up with the Titans. They don't have a lot of draft capital to trade, but they have a first rounder next year. They have a third rounder this year. They have three fifth rounders this year. So let's put this package together. Titans get a first rounder next year, a third rounder this year, and a fifth rounder this year for pick seven, and and they end up sliding down to pick 12. So now we're looking at the board with pick 12. In this multiverse, the draft continues to unfold. The Broncos take J.J. McCarthy there at pick number seven. Falcons take Dallas Turner. Bears take Roma Dunze. Jets take Olu Fashanu. The Vikings don't have a quarterback option anymore. So they take Jared Verse, the next best edge rusher in the draft here. They lost Daniel Daniel Hunter to free agency this offseason. So they take Jared Verse. Now the Titans are picking pick 12. You still got J.C. Latham, Talies Fuaga are on the board. There's cornerbacks on the board. Quinion Mitchell, Terion Arnold, Brian Thomas Jr. is there. Troy Fatanu is there. Where do the Titans go here at pick 12? They're going to be loaded up next year. They got an extra first. They got their third round pick back or, or a third round pick back in this year's draft, an extra fifth. So they load up on, on potential resources here and the chance to take more stabs at players. But where do they go with pick 12 in this scenario? Well, in this scenario, it's all about the tackles, in my opinion. I mean, I, I could make an argument for four of them. And I'll honestly, I mean, I think Latham and Fuaga are the two obvious ones. I don't think I got to say too much about that. But they're right tackles, right? Let's talk about the left a little bit. You mentioned Troy Fatanu. There, there is an increasing amount of people who think he is going to play left tackle yeah. at the next level, right? There was a lot of chatter about him kicking inside to guard, uh, but he's got like 35-inch arms, so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, I mean, there's some other stuff, some technical aspects of his game. That, that That's why some people think he's still a good fit at guard. But maybe the Titans think he's a tackle. He certainly got the length to do it. Um, that's a guy that I think is going to go in the top 15, top 16 picks. So there's an option there. And the fourth that you didn't mention, and Titans fans might think I'm getting crazy, but where's Amarius Mims going to go? Mm-hmm. I mean, this Georgia left tackle is an absolute freak. Okay. Like, look at the measurements height, weight, length, wingspan, all 91st percentile or better, and hand size, by the way. He's got like 11 inch hands. Five of the most important traits, measurements for a tackle, 91st percentile or better. The tape is downright silly. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of it yeah. because of injuries and he was a backup at first. Like, I think he's got like under 500 pass pro snaps under his belt for his entire career. Right. It's like 450 pass pro snaps, if that. But it's good. Like, it's a good tape. I wish there was more of it, but he looks really good. And uh, I-, I think with those measurements, those traits, like, I think someone's taking them early. I mean, you got Bill Callahan, your old line coach. You keep talking about him raising the floor for these guys. So in this scenario right here, I'm looking at the two right tackles. I'm looking at a left tackle that there still might be a question that he kicks inside to guard. And then I'm looking at another left tackle that's like, wow, he's got the most upside of the four players that I just mentioned. And he's only one of two of them that can play left tackle. And the other one, I don't know for sure if he can play left tackle. So it's like, yeah, I could get behind a Marius Mims but, in a situation like this. So, but, but either way, this scenario, it's, it's one of those four tackles. But he's a Georgia tackle. So the Titans are not allowed to draft any more Georgia tackles. So it won't <laughs> that be is true. Um, there's that another is Georgia true. player on the board here, Brock Bowers. A little rich to be taking him at seven overall, but you slide down to 12. Joe Alt's off the board. The top three receivers are off the board. Olu Fashanu's off the board. Do you start to consider Brock Bowers at 12? Well, one thing I keep thinking about, and this might not matter, but number one, it's the positional value. Of course, it's still a little rich for a tight end, even though he's one of the best players in the draft and you're no longer at seven. But number two, it's also the functionality of the tight end in Brian Callahan's offense. Now, I don't know if that's because he had Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I mean, it probably is and Joe Mixon. But guess what? Now he's got 
Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins and Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears, like he's probably going to target these receivers and running backs in Tennessee, just like he did in Cincinnati. Uh, they had a different starting tight end every year. Hayden Hurst, CJ Uzama, Irv Smith Jr. this past year, like you name it. They cycled through that position. It was never a focal point for them. Right. I think you like what you have in Chigakonkwo and, and Josh Wiley here. Of course, Brock Bowers significantly better you know, than those two guys, at least as a prospect. So I get it. But when I think of the positional value, I think of how Cali used tight ends in the offense. I just don't see it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think there is something about, you know, to something to say about Bauer's talent and what he could do for the offense as another playmaker when you think you have two very good receivers that you can rely on, but maybe you want a third and maybe that third is a tight end. I think there's a chance, but I, I'm not going to pick it in this scenario. I think if this is how the board falls and the Titans make this trade back, they probably take Talies Fuaga to play left tackle or they take JC Latham, who we are, again, there are reports that they love him. And they slot him in at right tackle and they look for their left tackle, Patrick Paul or somebody like that at pick 38. Or they say, we'll get Latham into camp. We'll let Bill work with him. Maybe we'll move him to left tackle. Let's see what, what he's capable of. Let's let's try to get a gauge for if he can do that, if he can make that position switch or side switch, I should say. With Bill Callahan's tutelage, maybe they view him as a left tackle. Maybe they view left tackle the way we view right tackle right now. We're like, we'll patch it together. We'll throw Raidens or NPF or Jalen Duncan or somebody. We'll, we'll, we'll hold it down. We'll figure it out with Andres someone. Pete. Andres Pete, if they make that signing. And they put Latham at right tackle and they look for their f- future franchise left tackle in next year's draft. Um, but if we had to make a decision with this multiverse, which pick are you making for the Titans here? Olu was off the board too, right? Yep. So it's like, I talked about the four tackles. I, I I would go between Latham and Roma Dunze. I just, I like Roma Dunze. Oh, no, was he gone too? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, it feels like it's got to be Latham in this situation. I would give strong consideration to Mims, though. I'll tell you that right now. I'd give a lot of consideration to Mims yeah. and, and try to get him with Callahan, those traits, those measurements, the unteachables, as I like to call them. I'd give really strong consideration to Mims in this scenario. Yeah, I, I think you have to. But um, yeah, I like the pick. Let's let's make it JC Latham. Just connecting the dots here with TD's report and everything else. So that's the pick. All right, Justin, one last scenario to throw at you. This one is going to have Joe Alt off the board, but Malik Neighbors on the board. Joe Alt goes five. Mm. Olufashanu goes six. The Giants cement their offensive line. And now you're looking at a board that has... Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Dallas Turner, Brock Bowers. The top two tackles are gone. The top two, the top one receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr., is gone. Three quarterbacks gone. Titans could maybe trade back again. Or do they take Malik Neighbors if he falls to them at seven? Well, we've explored the trade back scenario already, right? So I don't I don't think there's a whole lot of use in talking through that one in this scenario, even though the scenario is slightly different. I don't think they would take Malik Neighbors. Let me just say that, but I would. Yeah. I think I would take Malik Neighbors. You still, you know, both those receivers aren't getting any younger. This is almost certainly Hopkins' final year in Tennessee. The one hang up for me, and it, like, that doesn't have to be exactly like for like, but his neighbors really a replacement for Hopkins. They're so different, even from a body perspective, and I think a skill set perspective. I think Neighbors is all about that short area quickness and explosiveness. I think it's a and, and yards after catch, right? Like his profile to me is pretty fairly different. And he wins down the field too, and he wins at the catch point. So there is some of that carryover, but I, I still think they're fairly different players. Yeah, um, what I, I think I would take Malik Neighbors in this situation, but they wouldn't. I think in the very, very immediate short term, Neighbors fits better with Hopkins and Ridley than someone like Roma Dunze would because you can play him in the slot, you can move him, or you can move all three guys around. But Neighbors profiles Agreed. more as like a Z Agreed. receiver to me, whereas a Dunze profiles as your typical Agreed. prototypical X outside guy that if you are planning for the future yes. departure of DeAndre Hopkins... Maybe you do pick a Dunze here at seven. You you let him get up to speed his rookie year. Hopkins moves inside sometimes so you can get a Dunze some snaps out there. And then next season, you're ready to hit the ground running with, Absolutely. with Ridley as your Z receiver. You move around the formation and a Dunze is the guy that's lining up wide. And, and you know what? I'm so glad you said that because... Uh, number one, Adunze, he is totally the Brian Callahan receiver, right? Like the big bodied vertical winner down the field. And number two, I don't think there's this huge gap between Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze. I don't like either. Some people think the gap is so big. 
Thank you. Some people have neighbors as the receiver one. I think that's crazy. It's obviously Marvin Harrison Jr., but I don't think there's this big gap between neighbors and Adunze. I'm a huge Adunze fan. In fact, if they wanted to take him over Malik Neighbors with neighbors on the board, I would have no problem with that at all. I, I'd have zero problem with it. I wouldn't either. I, I wouldn't either. So let's do that. Let's make that the scenario here. The scenario where Joe Alt and Ola Fashanu are gone, but Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze are on the board. The Titans take Roma Dunze. Mark it down. I love it. All right. So we just explored. Did, did you see the reception perception profile, by the way? I did. Matt Harmon just dropped it, I think, on Monday. Roman Dunze, fully green chart. Every route. Every route is green. I think very high. Matt Harmon, very high on Roma Dunze. Personally, very high on Roma Dunze. You know, he's not as great of an athlete as Malik Neighbors, but he's still a very, very, very good athlete. Makes the contested catches. I mean, he torched my Texas Longhorns in the college football semifinal. So, yeah, I think uh, I, I would be very on board for that pick. And like I said, he just, he fits as a very good, you know, DeAndre Hopkins replacement. And if you're looking at... Brian Callahan recently went on a podcast uh, with Kevin Clark and talked about how he sees Calvin Ridley filling the Jamar Chase-esque role in this Titans offense. A guy you can move all around the formation, target whenever you need to, get the ball in his hands or let him go beat a guy one-on-one. If that's the case, Romo Dunze profiles a lot like the T. Higgins of the Bengals offense that Brian Callahan has been running the last few years. So then you ha- almost have your own version of Jamar Chase and T. Higgins with Calvin Ridley and Romo Dunze. I think that would be an excellent pick for the Titans if these two tackles are off the board, if they can't trade back there. That's how we see it playing out. And then they take the tackle in the second round. All right, Justin, that'll do it. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Thanks to those of you who are watching on YouTube. Thanks for everyone who has subscribed to the Music City Audible podcast on YouTube. We really appreciate you guys. We really appreciate Sinker's Beverages and Bluegrass Beverages. We'll raise a glass to Sinker's Beverages in East Nashville, Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Again, make sure to sign up for the in crowd. It's the only way you can attend the 440 draft party and uh, you can you get access to special allocations, insider deals. Search Uber Eats for Sinkers. Have all your booze delivered straight to your house. They have a massive walk-in beer fridge if you do get the chance to go out to Sinkers in East East Nashville. So thanks again to our sponsors. Thanks again to all of you. We'll be back later this week. Hope you all enjoyed the Titans Mock Draft Multiverse. Until next time, y'all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.